Why am I here? That's because I'm talking rom-coms. My, my least favorite genre. My but favorite. But <laughs> their favorite. Yeah. Katie and Jalissa. They have joined us. Special guests. Yeah. We haven't had guests in a long time. Thank you for having us. Thank you. It's an honor. Wow. And a privilege. This list, uh, some of you out there in the in the internet world may not enjoy what we have on here. You might have a problem with it. It's okay. But I have he, a problem with it. But these are our lists combined into one. In my opinion, the rom-com is dead. And this list is reflective of it because all of these are older than 10 years. I can agree because even when they try to bring back icons like Drew Barrymore and Adam Sandler who have given us so many rom-coms. They made one not too long ago. Was it Blended or mm -hmm. something like that? And and it was good, but it didn't hit you the same way that maybe 50 First Dates did. Right. You know? So I think and then J Lo, she's still trying to make more rom coms. And it's just not it's not made in it's Manhattan. Not the same. You know, it's yeah. Not the same. Yeah. I think that we're waiting for a resurgence of what what will Gen Z's rom com be? <laughs> All right, let's start. Number 10, how to lose a guy in 10 days. Honestly, it's it's timeless because we've seen, you said pop culture brings things back. Mm -hmm. It brought back how to lose a guy in 10 days. The yellow dress. The yellow dress on TikTok. Culture reset. Yeah, culture reset, newer generate, the younger generation mm -hmm. got to see it. And now everybody like, just it just came back to talk about it. So. And Matthew McConaughey is just at his uh, peak performance in this film. Yeah. He built his female audience before he built his male audience. Yeah, that's true. If you really true. think about it. Yeah. Sort of like how The Rock built his kid audience. So then they grew up and that's then so true. they watched his Fast and Furious movies. That is so true. So exciting. when he had his reconnaissance, he had both, he had everyone who, who was cheering for him and then he won an Oscar. Yes, this is so true. So that's but, how you build a team. How to lose a guy in ten days at number ten on the spot. I think that's perfect. Oh wow. Serendipitous. Yeah, uh-huh. Serendipity. Number nine, we have When Harry Met Sally. I know that's kind of low for a lot of film bros out there because this is a film bro rom-com. Probably hasn't aged as well. Yeah. Uh, especially when it comes to a, a dude and a girl thinking they like each other and then not liking each other. Mm -hmm. That is definitely aged differently. It's definitely different in this day and age. But it's a movie works. people still talk yes. about. Yes, there are iconic scenes, Meg Ryan basically blew up after this. Meg Ryan is, when you think rom-com, Meg Ryan is a name you think of. She's yes. one of the queens of rom-coms, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. It really is a love story to the city, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's why it has held around for so long, um, because it, it it just it shows you all of the big places in the city while also um, showing the characters, and I really loved those. Even if you haven't seen it like me, you've heard of it, and you know exactly. that it's like a rom-com staple. You mm -hmm. know the scene. Yeah. The fake orgasm scene. We could talk about Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our first of two Adam Sandler movies, The Wedding Singer. Now, when you think of rom-coms, you don't necessarily think of Adam Sandler, but... You should. He do, he do have some bangers. You should yeah. think of Adam Sandler. I love Adam Sandler. There are a few couples in Hollywood that when they work together, they just work together. Mm -hmm. And Drew Barrymore and um, Adam Sandler yeah. are just that couple for me. I think they're a fantastic Same. duo. Um, it, it's like, um, and then Meg Ryan and um, Tom Hanks. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. Just such mm -hmm. a good movie. The song where he sings to Drew Barrymore for the first time at, at like the, in the gym. <laughs> I used to have that on playlists back in the day. As it's you so should. Good. Yeah. It's so good. And honestly. Can you give us a, a snippet? Oh, yeah. I want to die. <laughs> it gives you just enough build up mm -hmm. and dry. It, it's the perfect little rom com. Mm -hmm. And I think it's actually a good deconstruction of like and the emo dude, too. Yeah. Because it, he's played as a joke. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I consider myself an emo dude. <laughs> and so to be deconstructed in that way, I was like, you bastard. <laughs> Speaking of Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, we have at number seven, You've Got Mail. Now this is, it. talk about a movie that's I've aged. I've never seen it either. Talk about a movie that's aged. This whole thing doesn't, you don't talk through email anymore. Who flirts through email? I mean, I would love that. Personally, <laughs> that would be really fun. For millennials and Gen Xers is like the rom-com movie. Came out like 98, 99, somewhere around there. Just, just amazing. 
Uh, Everybody still talks about it. Even if you haven't seen it like me, you've right. heard about it. And this is after Tom Hanks had won like two Oscars. Just a king. Number six, I don't think either of you put this on your list, but it is Spike, a Spike Lee movie. She's got to have it. And it's an old uh, trope of like movies and art in general. It's like a woman that has a pick of three different men. It's like she, something about Mary? Uh, kind of. Kind of like that? Not really, but okay. kind of. Uh, basically. Like Mamma Mia? <laughs> yes, kind of. Like, <laughs> in a way, it's like Mamma Mia. But basically, this woman has to pick between three different suitors, basically, and they're all different. So one's Spike Lee, one's another dude, one's another dude, and they all have different quirks and personalities. It's kind of like. And she has a dinner Mary. with she has a dinner with all of them at one point. <laughs> Next, we have number five. It's My Big Fat Greek Wedding. This one is one of my favorite Aren't they films. Another period. One, right? There, there has always already been a second one made, yeah. and she has a, a daughter, and there we um, go. they they you. follow through um, a similar storyline. I personally loved this because it took a um, non-standard um, image of beauty and put it front and center in oh, the storyline. And it was a um, woman of substance. It's a woman who isn't um, stereotypically thin and blonde. And it was something that I really loved because it was so different than all of the other rom-coms that I saw growing up. It also was a box office. It took the box off of my storm and it was, it never made number one but it was one of the top 10 grossing movies of that year. And now at number four, we have Never Been Kissed, Drew Barrymore, once again. It is so good. I think it's also my number one because it's one of my mom's number ones. Mm -hmm. And once I got to certain age, she was like, we're gonna watch Never Been Kissed and you're gonna love it. And I did. Yeah. It's That's just, it probably hasn't aged that well too. That's mm. so true. There are certain mm. rom-coms that are shown to you by older women in your life yeah. that um, leave you feeling more special to that. Yeah. Um, That's how I feel about Never Been Kissed. Oh, I love that. And when I've rewatched it, I've rewatched it with my mom. There you go. So it's just, I don't know. It's just so good. It's funny. And Drew Barrymore in there, she's like the star of the rom-com without Adam Sandler. And I feel like we in a lot of rom-coms, we see her with Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see her alone. And she's so quirky and funny and fun. And I think that's probably my favorite Drew Barrymore movie, along with Riding in Cars with Boys, because that was a really it's a good one. Yeah. It's a really good one, mm -hmm. but it's not a rom com at all. No. As women, sometimes we can tend to feel we make ourselves feel smaller, and we forget mm -hmm. how important we are yes. and how much bigger we really are, and how it's okay to take up space and room and be you, and you don't have to be anybody else. And we kind of see her start to do that and accept herself and love herself. And I, and I like that. I think yeah. that's why the rom com genre is dying because we yeah. are um, redefining femininity. We are redefining yeah. love. We're redefining what is funny about love because mm -hmm. in so many previous rom-coms what they used as a comedy moment in romance was actually just really messed up relationships that have no humor in them and yeah. it's time to move on and find better tropes mm -hmm. and that's why I'm really excited to see what the next generation does. Yeah. Number three we have 10 things I hate about you. Um, you guys were little babies when this came out, but there I think was... I've seen it, but I don't remember right. it. I've seen it once, but it was just like, okay. It was there. Mm. Anyways, it's great. Uh, don't listen to the haters. We're not hating. <laughs> not hating. Just not uh, stating <laughs> our um, underwhelmedness. Yeah. Right. In the late 90s, there was a resurgence of doing Shakespeare in different oh, ways. So true. you had Romeo and Juliet set in present day, but with the old text. Mm -hmm. This is in present day with present text yeah and it's basically a retelling and heath ledger's in it joseph gordon levitt all the people you know and it's just as a kid as a teenager as a high schooler came out when i was in high school okay that would have been really that would have been yeah. a really big moment if we were in high school mm. but there's there's a solid like eight years of difference <laughs> with us seeing it as a kid is probably more nostalgic driven for sure but that scene in the football field, the scene where Julia Stiles does the poem and Heath Ledger hears it Ugh. is iconic. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's a rom-com that's more dramatic, but it is definitely yeah. still funny. But it's also one that's still talked about because Julia Stiles, when you think of her, you think of that movie and mm -hmm. you think of, what's the dancing one? Um, Save the Last Dance? Save the Last Dance. Save the Last Dance. Yeah. Those are the two movies like you think of. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously still talked about a lot. Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore, 50 First Dates. 
<laughs> so good. Samwise Gamgee is in this. Are you kidding? How is that not it's a perfect so film? It's so funny and so good. And it just really shows the testament of really loving somebody. Because when things get hard, like health-wise, a lot of times you can see people get divorced mm -hmm. or break up. It takes, like, I don't know. It's just, it, it really It's an shows. emotional toll. It's and an emotional And for him toll. to choose her yeah. every single day. Spoiler, if you haven't seen the if end If you of haven't, this, see it now. Uh, hurry up and yeah, get right there. Now. And then come back. When you see him choose her over and over mm -hmm. and over again, it is one of the most moving pieces yeah. in the entire film. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think it shows a lot of like, I love you for you. And a lot of times we kind of see that in rom-coms, but they did it here in a more simple way than other ones do it. Other ones are like very big gestures, not saying he didn't do a very big gesture, but it's just, it's just different. And number one, 13 going on 30. Yeah, Mark Ruffalo, Jennifer Garner. I mean, this is where the thirst for Mark Ruffalo comes from, Yeah, right? it does. <laughs> so it, it is. Just the... He's like the edgy hot dude. The fan edits mm -hmm. of this film, yeah. they are the rom-com couple and that everyone will just thirst after. Yeah, and the casting of it, the, the girl who played young mm -hmm. Jennifer Garner in the movie, She's on TikTok. She, she just, just turned. She 30. just turned thirty, and she wore oh, the dress. Wow. She wore the dress. She That's looks cool. exactly like Jennifer Garner. Really? So that could be her daughter. It was amazing. It also plays into another trope of many rom coms of the um, headstrong, mm -hmm. um, business focused, yeah. career driven woman yeah. finding a person in which she can be soft with. But I think also um, like finding herself because she felt like she had to be like yes. all the other girls, right? Yes. Kind of like it never been kissed. Drew Barrymore felt like she wasn't like the other girls mm -hmm. versus Drew never became the other girls and just stuck to being her. But you see Jennifer Garner's character try to become the other girls and realize that's not her. I, I don't, it's just, it's a lot. A true rom-com, yes, is about love and yes, is about mm -hmm. falling um, in love with another individual. But to me, what makes a superior rom-com is the one that, not only loves uh, loves another person, but falls in love with themselves along yeah. the way. That mm -hmm. is a pivotal part of a rom-com for me, mm -hmm. and it can be thrown away. I will throw away a film yeah. if there is not self-development in it. You know who didn't make our list at all, and I just want to talk about her? Honorable mentions. Honorable mention. Right. Jenny from the Block. Jennifer Lopez. J-Lo has a lot of rom-coms. J-Lo, right? she's still making rom-coms. Made in Manhattan mm -hmm. is fantastic. The Wedding Planner also doesn't age that well because we she wasn't really a girl's girl, but at the same time, she was a little bit of a girl's girl because both the girls got a lot. So it was a little weird feelings, but overall still a good one. Yeah. And one thing about her, she's going to get married. Oh, yeah. In movies and in, in real, real life. life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to them. Talk, Talk to them. them.